Hi everybody, Tim here. Just wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, Counterpoint, the duo I did with Duncan Grant uh, about five years ago. Um, we tried to do some funky fusion smooth jazz without saxophone and do a four piece of Floating Point, his band. Uh, uh, but Duncan unfortunately passed from uh, pancreatic cancer before we could ever play out. We did, however, rehearse and uh, learn a few songs. One of them was Footprints, this is a Wayne Shorter a uh, jazz ballad that normally is in 3 4. <laughs> mm. Like that. But uh, I brought Duncan a version uh, that had been done by a, a fellow called Deviant, Deviant Jazz, this is a site, and he straightened it out into 4 4 uh, and played a, a different groove, which Duncan loved, but he thought it was too straight. Uh, so he programmed his own version of it. I'm going to see if I can find his groove here. This is bass line. So that was the feel that he was going for. He also added some cool uh, turnarounds key change for solos, uh, guitar and piano solo, and then a key change back uh, for the melodies and, and the other solos on the way out. Well, what I want to talk to you today about was uh, the section where uh, the melody comes in, the guitar melody comes in after the changes back to C minor. I'm going to find that on my computer. Just give me a minute. I can't see the screen very well here. I need to go to about three minutes in. And if you can hear a little bit underneath, there's this pulsing sequencer part that was on the Deviant Jazz uh, version, had a sequenced ostinato part, and I tried to recreate something similar on the guitar. Uh, using echoes, I put a slow gear, it slows the attack of the pick uh, on the guitar and a 420 millisecond delay with just one repeat, uh, which you have to play in time with the song. That's, I, I just found it by trial and error, found the right tempo to match up with the song. And then you get this kind of thing. <laughs> Now what's happening is I'm only playing half the notes. The echo plays the other note in tempo. So I only have to play it. like that. The trick when you're playing something that has chromatic movement at the turnaround on the song, and then Duncan added chromatic uh, passing chords, uh, flat five substitutions that pull you by a semitone into the next chord, you can't uh, echo the root <laughs> semitone apart they clash so i had to figure out what to do and the, the trick was to not play the root of the passing chords so when you're playing uh the last turnaround is d minor seven flat five d flat seven into c minor nine you play the third before you go down chromatically and the third again so you're not hitting a C sharp against a C and the same when you transition to F minor there's a quick F sharp uh, flat 5 substitution and you play the third of the chord so it was really, uh, I thought, <laughs> I had to work it out, a, a clever way around that clash and still be able to keep the echo uh, in the song. Uh, and I had to 
actually really practice to play only every other note so I wouldn't keep trying to play arpeggios because if you get lost you can really <laughs> off into space with that one. Um, so that pattern I wanted to just uh, talk about today because it's really buried on the track. It's a subtle background pulse uh, and I, I was kind of proud of it so I like to, to point that out. Uh, after that section comes in with the melody there's a, a distorted guitar solo. We had a clean guitar solo, electric piano. The melody comes back in and then a, a fusion -y guitar solo. The melody repeats. And the only other uh, really cool thing that Duncan did at the end, I'm just going to find, give me a second on the on the computer here. I can't see my screen around the iPad camera that I've got set up. So let's see if we're near the end. So that last shot, he uh, has... Uh, C minor, G minor, and then D flat, a semitone away from the tonic, so. And you get this echoing semitone up, it just leaves you hanging. But it was a really neat way to end the tune instead of a typical turnaround to the or landing on the tonic and holding it. So, uh, you know, R.I.P. Duncan, he has very clever ideas and, and uh, talented and, and sophisticated harmony that he brought to a, a traditional jazz waltz that we straightened out uh, into four and then he messed with it and added key changes and, and turnarounds and chromatic passing chords and just made it a really a really neat tune so I'll, I'll post the uh, uh, link to the, the full video uh, below and I hope you enjoy it uh, this is uh, five years I think since Duncan passed so we're coming up to the anniversary of that time, so I thought I would do something kind of uh, in memory of him. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.